All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so welcome to this talk about um, SBOM and SPDX. Uh, so I'm uh, Michael Odnacker from Bootlint. So did you start recording, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm Michael Odnacker. Uh, I'm the guy who founded Bootlint, and now I'm working as an engineer and a trainer on embedded Linux. And Butlin is a contributor to the Yocto project. So I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm working on the Yocto project documentation as a maintainer. So I'm uh, I'm one of the persons contributing patches. Uh, uh, many people actually contribute patches and you could participate to that too. It's actually a great work, great community work as well and a great uh, learning experience. Um, uh, Yoc um, Butlin also helps with the Yocto project SWAT team. So we, we actually um, check the output from the auto builders, the issues that are reported by them, and we make sure they're properly uh, triaged, referenced, and, and, and kept track of, of course, and eventually that uh, a fix is found. And we also notify people when uh, one of their commits break uh, the, the branch they, they're on. So um, I'm really impressed of, uh, about all the the insane amount of work, testing work that the Octo project does. And that's really an impressive uh, project with that re respect. Uh, by the way, Bootlin also has a Yocto project and open embedded development course. Uh, like all our courses, uh, the, the materials are like 300 pages are available on a free documentation license. Free as is free, free speech and free beer, of course. Uh, we want to maximize world domination of the open source solutions. So uh, some introduction and definitions like terms. So uh, the first term is SBOM, uh, which means software bill of materials. So it's a description of all the components you can find in the software release. So when uh, anytime uh, soft, uh, so something containing software is released, you have uh, details about the sources uh, included in that, that, in that release, their licenses, their dependencies, the changes that were applied, and also uh, most importantly to the fixes for known vulnerabilities that were applied by the build system, or manually maybe. <laughs> uh, so the, you've got more details uh, and a, a little more background on the Wikipedia page about this. And uh, SPDX, so you probably heard the term, is uh, a way to describe an SBOM. And uh, we chose SPDX because it's an open standard um, driven by the Linux Foundation. It's now a Linux Foundation project, which actually started quite a long time ago. Uh, actually, uh, I see the first release in 2011, and originally it was created for license uh, compliance checks. But of course, knowing what you have in your product uh, has much broader implications. So um, a good news too is that it's now an ISO standard, at least for version 2.2.1. That's the that has been accepted as an ISO standard. So that's a standard, right? And a standard can be an, um, implemented through various formats, provided they're uh, human readable, um, at least in, in the specification for SPDX. So currently, you can see uh, SPDX content in uh, various formats, such as YAML, JSON, RDF, XML, tag value, uh, flat text files, and even um, <laughs> Excel spreadsheets are a possibility provided you've got the right metadata and information uh, that's uh, that's acceptable. So uh, again, more details on Wikipedia on this. So why does all this matter? It's because uh, SBOM information is really important for uh, any time you want to do uh, a vulnerability assessment on the software you have in your product, and also, if you want to make sure your product is license compliant, compliant with the license uh, licenses of all the components that you carry in your product. Uh, another thing, too, is that the U.S. government and maybe the EU, as uh, someone said before, is uh, is pushing for uh, having such information in all the software it procures and will probably make it mandatory in the next months or years. So that's uh, that's good news, too. And what's, what makes us proud is that the Yocto project is, is a pioneer in this area. Uh, it's one of the first ones to do this, to, to generate um, an SBOM in a PDX format. Uh, I, I checked and for example, the competition like BuildRoot doesn't do it yet. Uh, even, even though they, they, they support SPDX, uh, expect SPDX license information. So that's compliance. 
but they don't have an SPDXS BOM yet. So um, how to generate an SPDXS BOM? So uh, that's something possible since version 3.4 of the Yocto product, Onister. Um, yeah, so that's been existing for one year now. Uh, and it's um, the, the Yocto project is in a good position to do this because uh, thanks to all the metadata in the recipes and, and the dependencies between all, all, all those. Um, and that was implemented by Joshua Watt uh, in through the create SPDX BB class. Um, class. <laughs> uh, and then I realized like a few months back that this was not documented in the manuals at all. And so I, I, I spent some time earlier this month to uh, to look at the code, look at pre previous presentations and figure out like as many details as possible and improve the Yocto product documentation about this so that people know how to use this, right? So I'm just here quickly sharing in this lightning talk um, how to use this, uh, this feature that's also available in the documentation. So, uh, but just to, to use the create SPDX class, just add, uh, inherit the class in your configuration, right? And just generate your image as usual. It's a bit like uh, CV check, just add, inherit the class and run, uh, bid your image again. And then there are a few uh, optional variables you can use as well to tune the output, uh, like to have more information, like more, more information, like depending on how um, storage capacity you have or how much data you want. So there's SPDX Pretty, Pretty, which I like because it makes the generated JSON files uh, really human readable. Otherwise, you just have a single line um, <laughs> of JSON code and it's like so flat and you can't read it. Uh, here it's nicely structured and you can understand the contents. Um, there's SPDX uh, archive packaged that actually um, will uh, generate compressed archives that of the files that are in the generated uh, target packages, but they are split by package. So like it's a way to see all the components one by one instead of having them flat in the generated image or, or having to inspect the individual packages. There's SPDX include sources. This adds a description of the source files for the host tools and the target packages. So this is just a description with what sources were there, which versions. Uh, and then um, and then you have XPX archive sources, which add arch adds archives uh, of the source files themselves. Like you have the, the full source archives uh, as well. So that's like good for um, license compliance, for example. You're sure that you're meeting uh, those requirements. Uh, by the way, SPDX archive sources only works with SPDX include sources. Um, that's a dependency. <laughs> uh, so if you want to check the individual uh, descriptions of each of the variables, just click on the links and you'll end up in the Yocto product manual variable reference uh, with all the variables described. Uh, so that's that's nice. So how to use those, it's the same thing as before, just edit your configuration file uh, and set the, the ones you want to one, and that, that's it. So I wanted to, to also say that, uh, talk about the output. So the main output of the create SPDX class is in uh, temp deploy images machine as your standard image. So that's the same directory. Um, so the top level output is called image dash machine dot spdx.json so that's the, the top level output and i'm going to show you how it looks like uh, another file that's related is image machine spdx.index.json it's uh, an index of uh, individual json uh, files describing the host and target recipes right so just an index and then you have an archive of all such files, of all such JSON files for each recipe. So there's a JSON SPDX file for each each recipe that's that was uh, used to to build that the, the image and to the was in, uh, and the software that was included in on on the target as well. So um, this the top level looks like this, right? So uh, you have some XPDX headers at the beginning. Uh, and then you have a list of documents that are referenced. And each of them has an, a URL that's used in the other uh, files that are generated. <laughs> so uh, it looks like this, actually, at the end. So you have, you've got a list of documents, which 
which each of them has um, an HTTP um, and uh, a URI actually describing them. Like so, for example, for the base files package and the runtime base files package. So that's what that these are two packages on the, on the image. In the uh, index.json file, you've got the same documents that are related that are that are described, and they have the you can relate them to the first document because they have the same URI. And in addition to the URI for each uh, document, you also have the, the file name for the individual recipe SPDX file that's here. And then this this is this relates to the contents of the tar archive with all the, J, the JSON uh, SPDX files. So that's how they they relate to each other, right? So that's a, a, a bigger tar archive here. That's that's what it looks like more or less so that you can remember. Um, but uh, what I'm talking about is not the only thing that gets generated when you use the create SPDX class. You also have files generated in temp deploy SPDX machine. And initially, I thought that these were the primary ones, but that's not the case. Those ones are mostly intermediate ones or extra files. Um, so you, you've got the um, individual JSON files I just talked about that are included in the archive in the, in the top uh, directory, the, the main directory. Uh, but you also have compressed archives of the files in the generated target packages. If you uh, specify SPDX archive packaged, so one per package. And, and then uh, compressed archive is source files if you want to, if you specify SPDX archive sources. So you also have the source files in there, in, in like them deploy SPDX machine, recipes, recipe uh, package name, the TARDIS LST. So that's underneath this this directory uh, and uh, temp deploy. So that's it, uh, quick, fairly, fairly easy so far, uh, fairly easy to use. Um, you you can tune the uh, the size of what gets generated. So you you can have like, if you include all the sources, of course, this generates more output and it's, it's bigger on disk. Nothing like too scary anyway, like a few extra gigabytes maybe of sources, but that's, that's not that's not bigger than uh, the temporary directories, of course. So uh, going further now, uh, and and then we can have a more open discussion because I I just did that work and I haven't made much further progress. Is how to uh, how to validate and consume the XPDX output that we get from the Yocto project. Uh, I'd like to be able to browse the output files and see, uh, like figure out browse the dependencies and things like that. Uh, just from the XPDX output. Um, so there's uh, on the XPDX project, you have a, a list of tools, but didn't, but the ones I found so far didn't really ring a bell. So, well, I, I what I, I first uh, headed to was going to the um, validation tools uh, for XPDX, but unfortunately, so far, at least with the latest output, um, you've got warnings with um, the Yocto project output. So it says that a property is missing. Um, so we don't, I didn't get validation yet. Uh, so uh, what remains to be seen is whether this is an issue in the validation or in, uh, in, in our output itself. So I need to spend time or we need to spend time looking at the standard and see what's, whether something is really missing or there's something wrong in the, um, in, in the tool, <laughs> in the validation tool. Uh, this, uh, it's also worth mentioning that's uh, there's the 3.0 version of the standard that's coming up and Joshua are, uh, is our representative uh, in this organization uh, to make sure that we have all the all we want to describe is uh, is possible uh, is easily describable and I mean the standard fits our needs right so that's that's great to have Joshua working on that and contributing to that effort what else can I say? Um, there's, so there's a new section on the Yocto project manual about this, creating a software bill uh, of materials. Uh, there's, uh, of course, Joshua's presentation like in two hours from now, something like that later today uh, about the SBOMs and uh, supply chain with the Yocto project. And really it's an opportunity to ask him about all the details, uh, the internal details and uh, the future plans. So don't miss this talk. There was also a nice presentation from Kate Stewart at the Embedded Linux Conference Europe in 2022, uh, like in, uh, in Dublin this year, uh, about using uh, SBOM in embedded projects. So don't miss this one either. And don't miss the SPDX standard uh, 
um, it's something you can read. It's not like not overwhelming. And it's something that's good to have under your pillow in case you have a question in the middle of the night. Uh, it's good to have, right? Um, so that's that's it. I think I'm on time. That was a lightning talk.